Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the second of this series video showing how we go about using a calculator or other programs to do something called transformations of data. So we don't want to do the add-ins, we want to do the view. We want to do the review here. I'm going to, I'm running right now I'm running on an Apple Mac. I'm running PowerPoint with a bamboo kind of pen interface. I've got flash debugger from Texas Instruments running on the left and GeoGebra, this great free Java app down in the bottom. And we're going to look at kind of looking at this kind of Cassiopeia type shape. That's not perfect, but that's close. And looking at transformations. So what we've learned is that we learn to store our series of points in a matrix, right? that basically stacks them up x, y, z, and then a one on the bottom. So if we have here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna, you're gonna learn very often that the zero, zero point's quite important. You're gonna do a lot of moving things to zero, zero, and you're assuming here that's zero, zero, zero. And so I'll go ahead and put, think about my x's. I'll make that a minus 20, and my y is maybe 10 and my z is zero, and there's my zero. Badly laid out here. Let me spread these out a little bit more, see how the immersor works. Okay, so these are gonna be my points on my Cassiopeia, and I said this was maybe minus 20, and then in terms of y, we'll call it 10, and zero in terms of z, this next point two, that's point one, this is point two going across, Point do might be something like minus 10, and then it's y might be minus 5, 0 in the z. That third point is we're going to kind of keep that as our rotation point in this case. It doesn't need to be on there, but you remember in AutoCAD that you did a lot of kind of knowing where your base point was. We're going to always keep these over on the right a little bit different, so we're going to call that next one maybe 11 to the right. And we'll call it a minus 6 and 0. And that last one will keep it a little bit different as well. We'll call it 22. We'll take it up a little higher at 12 and 0. And the reason why we're making this 0, this offset, is we want to just basically um, be able to recognize it when we pl start playing around with it. Okay, how does a transformation matrix work? Well, the transformation matrix is, talk about a one-stop shop. It starts with a unity matrix, and a unity matrix, or an identity matrix. You'll see in the calculator, there's a way to make an identity matrix here. As we go over the calculator, if I want to make a four by four identity matrix, all I do is this. Second matrix, identity, and then tell it four. That tells it, going to give you a four by four identity matrix that looks something like this. So that's where it's easier in the calculator. Understanding we go one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, 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 one. We always start with this and this is going to be our transformation. matrix and we're going to all always multiply our transformation matrix by our geometry matrix and these have to be stacked up XYZ with one fillers on the bottom these are going to have special values and I'll explain those here see if I can kind of go through that the, the right column, these ones right here, are for translation. So if you want to translate x, 10 in the x, or 10 in the y, or 10 in the z, you change those numbers, you multiply by your matrix, you get the move. That's more or less what equates to the move command. This here is an overall scale number. Each of these is scales in the X, Y, and Z. So if you wanted to scale everything by 2, you would change this to 2. If you only wanted to scale the X direction, you would change that one. These, as a rule, this 3 by 3 matrix is one that's going to be done for kind of 
not translations, but rotations, shears, and scales. Rotations, shears, and scales. And we're mostly going to be concerned with the rotation here, and that's what I'm going to go through right now. Understand that depending whether you are rotating about your X, Y, or Z, you will more or less lock up that column and row. Since we're working in a 2D projection here, we're going to be almost always rotating about the Z. So we're going to rotate, we're going to lock this row up, this column, and this row. We lock it up if we would. And then we replace these values right here with the appropriate, if I guess can say that, the appropriate by rote uh, trigonometric functions. And those are going to be cosine, minus sine, sine, and cosine. And if you want to memorize those, that would be a wonderful thing. Cosine, minus sine, sine, cosine. Cosine, minus sine, sine, cosine. Cosine, minus sine, sine, cosine. Because you're going to see that pattern will be repeated later when you go into 3D and you want to rotate about the X or about, or about the X. With the Y, you're going to see the only difference is that sign there is going to change from one place to the other. So you're going to, I'll write them again, replace these four with a cosine, minus sine, sine, and cosine. So for example, if we were going to turn our W 90 degrees to the left. In other words, 90 degrees counterclockwise. We take out our right hand, we put it up the Z positive Z axis. That takes to put our thumb up the positive Z axis. That means that counterclockwise is counterclockwise is positive. And so this would then be the value cosine of 90 if we're turning at 90. Cosine of 90 is 0. Sine of 90 is 1. But where we want the negative, that would be minus 1. Sine of 90 is 1, so that one becomes 1, and that becomes 0. All you do is multiply this matrix by that matrix, and you've done your rotation. If, in fact, I'm trying to erase here, and I'm going to approximate these values here in a little bit. If you are just rotating 15 degrees, right, or 45, I, let's deal with 15 degrees, so you can realize why we want to memorize that. 0 0.258 and I think it's something like 0 0.258 and the well we can do it over here why not we can turn on our calculator mix the worlds a little bit we're trying to memorize this we're not there yet we can say mode it's in radians we don't want it in radians in this case we're gonna to go to degrees hit enter second quit we can say something like the cosine of 15 degrees is 0 0.955, 0 0.966, 0 0.966, and we're going to want to get good at that because if we want to rotate this thing 15 degrees in a positive direction, the number here then becomes 0 0.96. The sine is 0 0.258. You want the negative minus 0 0.258. You want the positive 0 0.258, and you want the positive of 0 0.966. You multiply this transformation matrix by the geometry matrix, and you rotate your Cassiopeia. So let's see if we can do that in the calculator by putting our transfer matrix, transformation matrix into A, put in our geometry matrix into B, and then just looking at the numbers before we graph them out using another tool within the calculator. So you'll do this at some point in mathematics. Once you get to four by fours, you very seldom ever do it by hand. No more than you might do a lot of things once and then learn how to do them by hand. Realizing that a lot of your algebra rules, what is an inverse, multiplication, some of them transfer, some of them not do not to matrices. So let's see if we can do that. This time we'll just go back to the standard old matrix editor. So second matrix, we're going to go to edit and we're going to put it, uh, our matrix, our transformation matrix in A. And now we can plug in the numbers. Even though I don't have my float, I can still look at them. That's what's nice, 0 0.96. 
minus 0 0.258, 0, and 0. I'm hitting enters, learning how to get around in this 0 0.258 in this editor is an important thing, but later on you're going to see you really want to get good at writing these things in a program and forcing them into something that you can see. Um, something like an analogy would be the use of a script in AutoCAD, 0 0.966, 0, 0. We've got our second row done. Our third row is going to be 0, 0, 1. I'm going to go back here with that 1. Remember, we are not changing the Z. That's why the third row gets locked up in 0. And then finally, zeros along the bottom. 0, 0, and 1. Okay, we have lined up our matrix in A. I'm going to hit second quit here. I'm going to pause as I do the same thing in B just so I don't run out of my 15 minutes. I'll get it started and then I'll pause and then we'll get out and uh, multiply those together to do the matrix transformation. So, this is what you're doing in AutoCAD when you do a rotate, remember. So this is the first transformation. So we were not going to change the last column because that would be a, tra a, a translation. This is a rotation. So I'm going to hit, remember, no going into B, second matrix. I can go to edit. I have to go down to B. And right now I'm going to change this to a 4 by 5. Four rows, five columns, and at this point I'm going to pause, and when you come back, um, you'll see that the matrix is actually put in there, the, the description of the geometry. I'm going to hit a pause and keep going. Okay, you can see here that I've got the matrix B stored. Again, we're using Cassiopeia as an example. Eventually we'll actually get something that looks more or less exactly like Cassiopeia, so we can play around with rotation about a point that is not on the shape but for the most part you usually want to kind of translate your shape to a logical zero zero point do your rotations and then translate it back I'll link you out to a video that does that right now remember second quit in second matrix a we have our rotation of 15 degrees in a positive direction so I have now do second matrix a multiply a by second matrix B and I'm going to go ahead and store it in C stow it into second matrix C you'll see that there has been some translation if you think about that last one it was 22 on the right and now it's less that would make sense and as well, the one on the left, it was minus 20, and it's kind of being increasing because of the hypotenuse there. So we'll take a look at that. At this point, it's a great idea to go back and just check how you put things in and out of matrices. Um, we'll see later on as I bring up GeoGebra, you know, we'll be able to do both and then kind of graph, etc. You're going to see finally as I fill out the last minute and a half how do I put a matrix in GeoGebra what's great about it is you can give it a name here remember that was the downside of matrices in your calculator so if I have a I can call it um, Casio equals and what I do is I I have to include my lists of lists inside of list delimiters so for instance 1 comma 2 3 comma 5 for instance comma open 4 comma 90 comma 80. I'm just putting in numbers to show you the format. There's nothing particular about these. 50 comma, 60 comma, 90. Close. Squigglies twice. Now Casio is actually now a matrix. You see it's stored right here. And later on we'll see whether it actually we need to transpose it or not. So doing transformations in many many different calculators is very possible very easy if you remember two things one is that you start with a 4x4 four four identity the second is that you multiply the transformation by the geometry matrix and then remembering that you have one column for translation and then the other ones you're going to play around with the cosine minus sine sine cosine thanks for listening bye